Hello, Vince here, coming to you from the Storage View Northeast headquarters. Today we're looking at this. This is the Noctua NHD15 G2. This is their new generation of their venerable NHD15 tower cooler, uh, their desk, you know, desktop uh, computer cooler. This new generation doesn't have any major changes, but it does have a lot of small changes that add up to big improvements, and we will go over those uh, in this video. Um, I'm going to be using this uh, in my desktop. I'm going to be using it on an AM4 platform. Uh, it will be replacing my aging, broken EK Waterblocks uh, AIO. This thing is on its way out and needs to go. Let's just take a look at some of the things that come in the box. Uh, normally here would be the AMD components. Uh, I already use them. Here are the parts for the Intel mounting mechanism. Uh, it comes with instructions that are pretty good. It comes with cleaning cloth. Uh, Noctua's thermal paste that's pretty good as well. Uh, a very handy dandy AM5 thermal paste guide if you've got an AM5 CPU. Comes with Y splitter for the two fans. Uh, low noise adapters for each fan, comes with uh, some snacks, and it comes with Noctua's badge, which I love. Oh, and not to be forgotten, it comes with this really, really nice uh, Noctua screwdriver for installation for the, uh, for the Torx bits on the end there. So like I said, there's no one big change for this generation of cooler. There are a bunch of small changes that add up to big improvements. The most obvious is that it comes in three different varieties now. Regular, LBC, and HBC. LBC, unfortunately, is not Long Beach, California. Uh, it stands for low base convexity. Basically, the cold plate comes in different levels of convexity for different heat spreaders on different CPUs. So you can check out Noctua's website. They'll have all the information you need for which version will fit your particular CPU. Or you can just go with the regular version if you think you're gonna change CPUs in the future and just get even more longevity out of a cooler that will probably last longer than you will. So in addition to the different convexities on the cold plate, you also get different fans. So these are new fans designed specifically for this new generation of cooler. A couple small things in there that add up to big improvements as well. The two fans that it comes with are two different speeds and there's a whole bunch of science behind this if you really wanna get into the deep dive. Gamers Nexus had a great interview that really goes deep into the science of why that matters. But the short version is basically having fans spin at two different speeds reduces the amount of you know constructive interference with uh, different wavelengths of audio. Another improvement with these fans is that they are made from a new special type of plastic that doesn't deform or stretch or degrade over time with you know heat cycles and age, and that allowed them to really narrow the gap between the fan blades and the cage. And so what that means is these fans now have higher static pressure. And so like I was saying with adding up little changes here and there, that higher static pressure means they could have the fin stack on the heatsink be more dense. More dense heatsink means better cooling. With all that in mind, let's take a look at some performance numbers. Now, again, I am replacing ostensibly a broken AIO, but it's loud, but it still functions. So you'll still kind of get the same effect if you replace an AIO with this. I am in a very peculiar situation where I kind of got ripped off on eBay, but I don't want to talk about it, that I got a broken AIO. So replacing it with that, let's take a look at some performance numbers. They are not gonna surprise anybody. Okay, so I skipped a lot of the boring parts, uh, so you wouldn't have to watch it, but here is the cooler in the system. Uh, I highly recommend reading the instructions, because uh, if I did, I would have realized I didn't have to take the motherboard out, but that's okay. I had to do that anyway, made it easier to get the rat off. Um, this is obviously not a standard configuration, but uh, it fits just barely down here. It's There's literally a millimeter of clearance between the heat pipes and the bottom, and this fan is a little higher and just clears the side panel. So that is something to keep in mind. This is a big cooler. Um, the measurements are, of course, all over uh, Noctua's website, um, so make sure you measure your stuff. I did measure this as well, so I knew this was gonna fit, and the, uh, the, the orientation of this matters as well. I had originally had it flipped the other way, but then the graphics card wouldn't fit. Uh, and I just rearranged the fans so they were originally, one was over here, uh, and I moved it back here to clear my RAM. And, you know, just to kind of get it a little oriented a little bit better. But still the same configuration as far as pulling air from the front, going out the back. This way we're not finding stuff. There are markings on the bottom of these fans to show you which direction the air flows, but as a general rule of thumb, the side of the fan that the hub is mounted on, here I can show you with this fan, 
Uh, generally, the side of the fan that has the hub on it, you know, not, not the open side, the side that has the little frame, this is the side the air comes out of. I'm going to get this back hooked up to my system and uh, check everything out and go from there. Overall, I'm expecting a pretty big improvement in general airflow in the case. Uh, one thing that I will show you is uh, the having an AIO, at least in the configuration I had it, you know, everything stayed within temps, but all of the components in here has ended up being a little bit warmer. And uh, I think going with a tower cooler that just shoves the air out of the back here, I think will overall improve the thermals inside the case, as well as not having the restriction on the front here. Let's look at some data. Shout out to Log Charts. I found these guys just Googling like uh, hardware info, um, you know, logging stuff, and I found these. This is such, such a great resource. Anyway, so this is the ek aio that i had this is you can see here the average temperature is around 71 degrees 72 degrees pretty stable uh, this is a 30 minute burn-in test in cinebench um, i did the same test between both uh, the ambient temperatures were the same as well it's an air conditioned room so all other variables are more or less the same looking at the nhd 15 the temperatures are pretty stable throughout and we're hovering around 65 64 degrees uh, ignore this mean temperature up here. It's factoring in um, these dips where the test restarts. But you can see the AIO immediately pegs at 70 degrees and that stays there the whole time where there's a little bit of a ramp up for the NHD 15. The, what this really means in practice is that if you have quick loads that are you know hitting the CPU, you're not gonna ramp up your fan super hard. The big heat sink has enough thermal mass that it can suck up those big you know, momentary spikes and keep your fans running a little bit slower. You can see in this screen grab of a decibel app that I have on my phone. So the EK AIO is going to be a little bit louder simply because it was broken. But more importantly, especially you can see on this spectrum that spike around 8,000 hertz is really what's going to be the annoying sound. That spike around 8,000 hertz and the spike just under 16K those are the parts that are going to be annoying. And we're also hovering around 60 decibels uh, average. On the Nocto cooler, and again, these were the same ambient temperatures, the same distance, you know, all other factors are the same except the cooler. You can see it's much quieter. We're 10 dB quieter on average, which is great. Just a natural psychoacoustic thing is that not all sounds and frequencies are appear the same loudness to us. We use something called equal loudness contours in audio engineering. So there is a difference between the actual pressure levels the frequency produces and how loud we perceive it. But suffice to say, and the point I'm trying to make here is that it's not just how loud it is, it's where it's loud because of how we perceive the loudness of particular frequencies. And if you're curious about this graph here, this spike in the middle is where we're most sensitive to, and that's around a thousand hertz because that's where most of the information is in human speech. Evolution let us have the most sensitivity here for pretty obvious reasons. So having that line be slanted like that means it's ostensibly brown noise, which is similar to white noise, but it has the lowest high frequency content of any of the color noises. So there's white noise, pink noise, brown noise, there's a bunch of others. But the point I'm making is that nearly 45 degree line down that is very close to perfect brown noise. Obviously, it's not perfect. There's other factors at play. There's, you know, environmental noise and stuff, but pretty dang close. And brown noise is not a bad thing to target since brown noise is typically associated with stuff that's relaxing, like waterfalls or rivers. But I'm falling so deep down the rabbit hole, uh, I'm going to get out now. So another thing to pay attention to, we're back on the AIO chart here. This is the GPU temperature. Now, like I said, I ran Cinebench, which does not hit the GPU at all. Yet as we go, the temperature just keeps rising and rising. Granted, it's not hot. It's... 44 degrees Celsius on the GPU because it's ostensibly doing nothing. Uh, I think something loaded in the background. You could ignore this spike. Having my particular type of AIO setup where the radiator is at the front of the case, we're just going to heat up the entire case. But if we look at the same thing on the Noctua, you can see over the course of the test, the GPU temperature actually goes down because the increased fan speed as the test goes on, it really just adds a ton of airflow, all the components around it get cool. We can even look at like the chipset temperature as well, the same thing, the temperature goes down. You know, we're only talking like two degrees here, it's not a huge difference, but 
Point being is if you have a setup like mine where the radiator is on the intake of your case, switching to a cooler like this, especially a big tower cooler that has big fans on it, will greatly decrease the temperature of your case overall. Especially if you're gaming or doing workloads that hit both the GPU and the CPU, the CPU cooler will be helping out everybody in that case. Couple things to note, like I had mentioned, uh, this is a big cooler, so make sure that this will even fit in your case. Uh, I just barely scraped by with mine. Again, my case is a little unique, but in general, it's about the size of a, of a, of a tower case. Make sure it fits. Uh, the other thing is the price. It is definitely expensive, but I would not say it's overpriced. And what I mean by that is there is a ton of research and development that went into this, and what you're paying for is that research and development. And it absolutely shows in the performance and you know, Nocto has a reputation for a great warranty, a great reliability, and I have no reason to believe that this product will be any different. I'm continuously impressed with what Noctua can bring to the table with their new products. This is no exception. It's great. I definitely recommend it if you've got the spare cash for it. Uh, and again, it's expensive, but not overpriced. With all that said, Check out the write-up on the website for this that I did. Check out Noctua's website. If you're interested in this, be sure to check out which version, which convexity works best for your CPU. Make sure it's gonna fit in your case, of course. Um, other than that, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and uh, stick around for more videos like this.